If your institution is claiming to be an inclusive educational space, it is your responsibility to make sure that that comes through in your classroom. I really think that the first step has to be just reflecting on who you are and who your students are. Question number one, when you think about your identities, which of your identities do you think of first? Even just the idea that you're trying to be aware of your biases helps you mitigate them. I want to be an embracer of all peoples, of all walks of life, and so therefore I constantly find myself wanting to get to know my students better. It matters to me that my professor wants to know me. It matters that they care about my education and my path. Microaggressions can have a negative impact on students, especially if they're already questioning whether or not they belong in that particular environment. I have an activity in my course that's called a what would you do activity. They're asked to think about, well, if you were in a position where you experienced this microaggression, how would you respond to it? From the what would I do and the class in general, I will never be a bystander to any situation like that. I will not hesitate to say something. And so what I would like to do is kind of expose some of my own writing and, uh, and show you the process. When we are teaching our students to solve these um, worldwide problems, uh, we want them to be struggling with the problem itself and not thinking that they are the problem or that they don't belong. This is my son, George, and this is him learning to go downstairs. And here he finally, he gets it. And you should feel the same way when you're working on these things. Like, why wouldn't you be able to master these ideas that we just put out here? Every one of you should be able to do that. Having teams that are diverse produces excellent work. So I think it's important to model those kinds of behaviors in the classroom. When you're in a class, especially a class that involves any level of group work, make sure that you're talking to someone who looks different from you. We sit down and we develop collaborative group agreements. Rule number one, everyone should have a voice. Number two, listen to complete thoughts. I'm really worried that we're really lacking role models for our students. We have to find more examples of diverse role models. Women of color, individuals with disabilities, people who are immigrants. It's also important to ask students, is there a voice that I missed this semester? and being open to that feedback. We want to create a space where students can not only see themselves as learners, but also in the curriculum they see themselves. Oh, I see someone that looks like me, um, or acts like me, or dresses like me within this field. I can probably do it. When I think about why a faculty member should embrace inclusive teaching and equitable outcomes, it's because that's why we became teachers in the first place. We are shaping the future of our nation. And you do that not just by giving students content, but it's the way in which we engage our students. It's the way in which we treat them and make them feel in the classroom. That's what equitable learning is all about.